heal the world, make this a better place for you and for me and the entire human race. There are people dying, but if you care enough for the living, make a better place for you and for me. Hello everybody, I'm Lady Cheryl. Welcome to my YouTube channel. In this episode, I'm going to share with you how I preserved my organically homegrown onions. Well, the majority of them, I caramelized and then pressure canned them. And a small portion of them, I dehydrated and stored in glass jars to be used in soups. Okay, let's get started. Okay, guys. I'm getting ready to caramelize my onions. And as you can see here, I saved my big onions for this process. I'm going to cut the tops and the root part at the bottom off, peel the skin back a few layers, and then I'm just simply going to slice the onions and put them in my slow cooker. I'll be back when they're all sliced and put into the slow cooker. Okay? Okay, so I thought I would just show you uh, what those three onions looked like when I removed the top and the bottom. And that will go into a raised garden bed, this over here, to deter insects. And this will be caramelized. Okay, guys, in this crock pot, I have all of my onions sliced, diced. And of course, I washed them and peeled them first. And uh, you can put uh, larger pieces than you would in your dehydrator because these are going to caramelize in my slow cooker for 12 hours and to these onions I'm going to add extra virgin olive oil and I'm not going to measure I'm going to put about a fourth of a cup and as you can see I have my gloves on and I'm going to thoroughly mix it up and I'm not worrying about all of the onions at the bottom getting coated because you know what goes up must come down so this this oil will drip down but i can feel the bottom of the crock pot and now i'm going to turn it on and put it on low and i will cook it for 12 hours and i will come back and let you see now those of you that eat salt you can uh season it if you want to I recommend that you use pickling salt. That way it won't, you know, uh, get your jars off cloudy. I don't use salt, so I'm not going to add any. But your seasoning, you can add whatever you like. It would not take away from the uh, canning process. Okay, I'll be okay. Back. So I have the onions with the olive oil in the crock pot. And as you can see here, it's set for low for 12 hours. And I'll come back when they're all done. Okay, guys, in another 15 minutes, it would be uh, five hours that this has been cooking. And I just wanted to show you that the onions, I'm stirring it up from the bottom. And remember, I didn't add any water, but you can see that liquid because onions have a lot of water in them. And they are caramelizing real good. And you can see some here from the bottom. All of it's going to look real dark like that when it's finished. So, it stirred up really well. I'll put the top back on it. And uh, let it cook for seven more hours. Okay, guys. It's been 12 hours. And the timer cut off in the middle of the night. So, this has cooled down. So I'm going to let it cool down a little bit more, slightly warm. And then I'm going to fill these into small jars. And uh, I will pressure can them. And I'll bring you back and show you the procedure. Okay, guys. I have my onions in my sanitized jars. And as you can see here, I filled them up no higher than this rim right here. Because you always want to allow um, space for expansion and uh, 
while their pressure can sometimes it can swell and the pressure would build up so you want to have some space there so that you don't have to worry about your lids popping off or the jars cracking and of course you guys know in all my videos I show you how you can use this funnel and your and dip the product into the uh, jar now this is cold pack because remember I processed this while I was sleeping with my crock pot and it had an automatic timer on it to shut it off after the 12 hours were up so the product is cold the jars were sanitized and they were slightly warm when I put the product in but they're lukewarm now and my rings were washed the jars were washed in soapy water and also the lids they were placed in uh, boiling water and then taken out because you don't have to boil the lids too much anymore like you had to do in the olden days. I guarantee you they will seal if you follow my directions. Now the main thing that you have to be concerned about when you are putting your lids on your jars is to make sure that you remove all bubbles. See that bubble there, there, here, here. So I'm going to take my debubbler and I'm just going to move it up and down around the sides until you get all the bubbles out. And I'm filming with one hand and doing this with the other hand. So I will when I put the camera down. You see how the liquid has gone down? I will put the phone down and, uh, and make sure that the bubbles have moved to the top and escaped once I put the phone down. Uh-oh. So I just want to show you a little bit of that deep bubbling process. I'm not going to draw the video out and make it very long because you guys know that I will be going live on Tuesday night to answer any of your questions. I go live every Monday night, but this uh, week because it's Memorial Day Monday, I will go live on Tuesday at 7 p.m. Central Time. Now, I'm going to put the phone down and I'm going to continue to, to debubble this and then I'll come back. Now, this is where my training as a cosmetology educator comes in because I had to instruct sterilization and sanitation. Now, if you didn't know, when you pressure can, you will sterilize what is in the jars, the lid and everything in it. And that's why Balls and the uh, Preservation Agency uh, for a Home Canning recommends that you no longer boil the lids. Now, I'm not saying the way I do it is the right way. I'm saying that I agree with the experts and this is how I do it because I know what that pressure canner will do to any non-beneficial bacteria in your jars. So before I uh, started filming this segment, I want you to know, if you look right here, you'll see three pieces of paper towel that I, I put in this vinegar. And if you didn't know, vinegar is a sanitizer and I just moistened my paper towel and I wiped around the rims of the jars, just like so. And this will be the fourth time. Do you have to do it four times? No. I do it four time because, times because I'm a little anal and I just wanna make sure that I sanitize everything really well. Now you don't have to worry about this portion right here, just the top where your lid will meet the glass. And by the way, I've already examined my jars very carefully and I made sure there weren't any nicks on them or cracks. If you have that, you wanna throw them away and remember that I sanitize these lids 
rims and jars with hot soapy water and then I dipped them in boiling water just for a second. I didn't boil the hell out of the lids like we used to do back in the day. And then you want to put on your caps. And it's kind of hard to do when you're doing it with uh, one hand. And I'm just gonna finger tighten it. You don't want them really, really tight in case there needs to be some pressure, an air bubble, or something that needs to escape. That's the reason why you don't screw them on real tight. Okay, I'm gonna put the phone down and then I'm going to put all of the caps on and tighten them just finger tight. So, now all of the caps and lids are on the jars. They are at room temperature. So we're going to fill our canner. We're gonna add the appropriate amount of water. Uh, I'm using the All-American canner, but for the sake of those that have different types of canner, I'm not going to mention how much water I'm putting in the canner because we all have different types and different models. So you follow your manufacturer's directions on how much water to put in the canner. Okay, let's go do that. Inside of the canner, inside there, you want to put your little metal bottom there because you never ever want to put jars into a canner with that out that there because you don't want that direct heat to heat up those jars. And then we're going to put our jars in. And as you can see, don't have enough to fill in the canner, but wait a minute, I'm gonna show you what I do. I'll be right back. I put this jar of water in this one, and you'll see that they look rusted out because I never take the tops off. Should I have an emergency, I have sterile water that I can take this top off and use. I just keep them in my kitchen, and whenever I don't have enough, I just use them to keep the canner uh, symmetric and even so nothing will fall over. So now I'm going to fill my canner with the appropriate amount of water and bring it to a boil. After I put the appropriate amount of water in my canner, I take the excess white vinegar that I had and I pour it into the water because what that does is it keeps your uh, jars from getting cloudy. And now I'm going to put the top. Turn my gas on high, and I have my top on. And as you can see with the All American canner, it's lined up it, in, with that arrow and that indentation there. And then you want to put your bolts on. And after you have all of your bolts on, you're going to turn them to the right. My mom taught me this when I was a little girl, righty tighty. Lefty Lucy. So if you want to loosen them, you're going to turn to the left. And you want to tighten, you're going to turn to the right. And by the time you get to the last one, it will already be almost tight. Okay. So now they're on. And we're going to let this come to a roaring boil. And once you see the steam coming out of here, it'll make a hissing sound. You let that uh, make that sound for 10 minutes. And then you're going to put your weight on. Your geared gauge will have to come to 11, okay? Right there at 11, steam will be coming out of here. This will be at 11, and it'll be at this point that you put your weight on, set your timer, and of course you're gonna have to reduce your heat so that you can keep that gauge steady at 11, okay? Just want to make that clear. And your weight will be determined by your altitude. And you can Google or check with your canner manufacturer. But at my altitude of 1,000 feet, I'm going to put on the 10-pound weight right here. So I'll have it right here handy when it comes to a boil. And I'll bring you back. Right, my uh, gear gauge is at 11. And I put the weight on after 10 minutes. 10 pounds for my altitude, I reduce the heat, and now it's time for me to start my timer. And for pints or less, you need to process onions for 60 minutes. So that's just an hour, 
I'll set my timer and I'll Power be back. has been up and I turned the gas off. And I just let the canner cool completely down. As you can see here, the gear gauge is past zero. And now I'm going to remove the weight. And a little steam is going to come out. Not that much because it's been some time. But you can hear it. And I can hear pings inside of the canner. After you do that, you're going to take your bolts off. Remember, righty tighty, lefty loosey. And they're not tight over here because they're almost all are off. Now, I open the canner with the top away from me. So I'm going to lift up and then away. And you can see some steam. And I'm going to put the top down right here. And everything is in the same place where it was. And now I'm getting ready to lift them out of the canner. I'll be right to take the jars out of the canner. And I always tell you to use these handles, the wood. And the plastic part is what you're going to put on the jars. I'll take the water out first. And don't be afraid because these are ergonomically designed that they're going to grip this jar very well and you don't have to worry about it dropping. So now I'm going to take the next jar of water out and I just use these when I don't have enough, like I said before, to fill the canner. So I'm going to take my small jars out. And I pour the water off. Let's put another one here. And we're going to get this one. It smells so good. And I'm going to put another one right here. And I'm just going to move these back a little bit. And then we have two more. I'm Pour the water off and put it right there. Make sure nothing is touching. And then we'll get the last one. And we'll pour the water off. There's nothing there. And we'll put it here. Now it'll be at this point that you can tighten your rings. I can't do that holding this uh, camera, so I'm gonna hold her. And I tightened up the rings on the jars. Now I'm just gonna put a towel across them. You can see that they have all sealed, but if you don't have one to seal, if you put a little towel there or two, it will keep that heat in there and then it will seal. Okay, and after this is all done, I'm gonna show you what you need to do. I'm going to come back in 24 hours, and I'll show you what I do after that. It's been 24 hours since I pressure can my caramelized onions. And the next step that you should do is thoroughly wash your jars so that you won't get a false seal with something corroding around here. Now, some people take the rings and put them back on the jars and that's okay providing that you've tested them and made sure you see the liquid going to the bottom make sure that nothing leaks from the bottom check this after 24 hours and then wash them off and if you want to put the rings back on fine but I don't see the point in doing that but I'm not here to judge anybody. I'm here to just pass on to you what I've learned. So your last and final step is to date your food. And I just put the month and the year. And um, a lot of people ask me, how long will the food last? And for legal reasons, I have to tell you, 18 months 
is how long balls recommend you have a seal on a jar. But I do personally keep food longer. Now, I would like to share with you my simple procedure for dehydrating onions. Okay, guys, this is what I'm doing this morning. I am chopping up the smaller onions out of the harvest and I'm dehydrating them in my nine tray Excalibur uh, dehydrator. I put the uh, onions in the dehydrator, I take my meat cleaver and I just rough chop them and they're easy to do because I use the small onions to dehydrate. And so then I just put them, just load up the dehydrator. Spread them around so air can get all around it. Okay? I set the uh, thermometer for living food, which is 125 degrees. And let me just show you here. I removed a lot of the trays because I don't want to dehydrate that many onions. And so I spaced them out for trays so they can dry quicker. Okay. Okay, I just want to share with you that the onions have dehydrated. It only took five hours, and you want to make sure that they're super crispy, and they are. I saved my small miscellaneous jars to put small volumes of dehydrated products into. So as you can see here, I thought these jars were pretty cute when I got them, so I cleaned them thoroughly, and I sanitize them again in boiling water and let them dry. And then I put my uh, food in them. And in this case, it was my dehydrated sweet onions and some of the green onions too. Okay. I sincerely hope that I share something with you that you can use. This concludes this video. I appreciate you taking time out of your schedule to watch it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and tell your friends about my channel. God loves you and I love you too. Thank you for watching. Bye now.